So let me now begin with connecting to data. Now in this particular topic, we are at the end of this lesson, you will be able to understand how you can connect to Tableau data server. You will be able to differentiate between a join and blend. How can you perform a join on a data? How can you blend a data? We will discuss the various connection options available. We will understand how Tableau server works in terms of the Kerberos authentication. All right. Uh, we will understand various performance optimization techniques as well, shadow extra extract as well as uh, different methods that we can prepare in terms of the data that we want to analyze, all right? So let me begin. Now the very first topic, which is uh, connecting to Tableau server. So I'm gonna first take you through a couple of presentation slides here, and then quickly move on to the environment where we will actually then start exploring the topic. So. Now, when you want to connect to a data source in Tableau Server, it's pretty simple. You can connect to a flat file in your local machine. So one is you will click on to the server in the start screen, and uh, you can specify the server name. You can specify and uh, show your, uh, uh, log in your uh, credentials, the username and password. And based on that, you can perform the, you can have your connection to the database, all right? So that's how you can connect to the Tableau server as well, all right? So that's the very first basic. So the Tableau administrator is the one who assigns the roles and creates these data sources, all right? And you have, uh, Tableau has the facility in order to import different forms of data for the analysis for your ease. And uh, once you're connected to the Tableau server, then you need to select the Tableau server data source. On the data menu, you will need to select the data source to download a local file, a local copy. You can select and create a local copy, and then you can also duplicate, uh, a duplicate of that data source will be added up into your data window. So that's how you can connect to Tableau server as well, all right? And uh, it basically promotes various features wherein uh, you can then connect to the Tableau server for your data. So you are in this example, you can see that you're able to connect to the Tableau server as an admin and uh, connect to the sample superstore and it downloads, it creates a local copy and duplicates all the data in that particular data window. That's how we can see the sample superstore and you can connect to the server. Uh, next, we're going to also understand what is joining and blending. So before I move on to the presentation slides here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the environment directly. Let us start exploring these blending and joining features uh, right there in. All right, I'm going to simply just uh, clear the sheets that we have. And um, let's go back to the connect to data source window. All right, now in terms of, uh, your, this is where you're able to connect, you can see the Tableau server. So it's through the server that you can connect wherein you can specify your server credentials and you can click on connect. And uh, based on that, that's how then you can provide the credentials and uh, log in, all right? Now I do not have a server uh, connection wherein I can show that example, but this is how you can click on any of these servers. You would have to uh, type in the URL, click on connect and then provide the usernames and login provided. And that's how you can connect to your data source using a server option. All right, uh, I'm going to show you the file option wherein you can connect to an Excel and let us discuss the join and the blending part here. All right, so let me click on Excel. We have the sample super uh, data store here and in this, when I pulled in order, all right, I pulled in the first sheet. So there are three sheets in that particular Excel file. When we pull in order, this is how now you can identify that whatever are, uh, these are the header names, these are the dimensions and measures, that's how it's getting identified. You can notice all the dimensions are first place. You have all your measures, then you're able to identify the data type and the role, an ABC, which is a contextual value or numeric value, that means it's a dimension with a pound sign. What kind of a data role is it? Tableau is automatically identifying each of these roles as well, all right? Even in the metadata, that's how you can see the field names, the field uh, name that you're going to see onto your tape, onto 
uh, your view and the table from which it's going to be getting pulled in from. In this, you can uh, rename in case you want to change the particular name, hide it, uh, alias it or describe it. All right, so this is how you connect. Now connections is where you have the option to connect between live and extract. Now if you connect to live, that means you connect it to this particular sheet live, that means any update happening onto your uh, sheet, any kind of updates on the sheet, there is a live connection, it will automatically update your views as well onto your sheets that you're creating. And in case if you select on an extract, all right. This is what it means that it allows, uh, what it does is it, it imports that data into the Tableau data engine first. In the data engine where it's going to perform the queries, it will create an extract and based on these we can then start using the connection. All right. So what it does is it disconnects. It's more like a small extract, more like a cube if you understand it in that manner. Tableau creates an extract of that file providing you uh, a disconnected uh, where it allows you to give you a better performance, a better query. Uh, that's how you can then uh, work on and start creating uh, and working on these extracts. Now you can refresh these uh, uh, extracts at a timely manner as well. So that is what Tableau extracts are, where it extracts it as a copy of the data uh, and saves it in the engine and that's how then the performance as well gets better in terms of using where you can connect to your particular data. All right, so you can work with uh, multiple data sources. Data sources can be of any type, all right, wherein you can edit from the number of lists that you can see. It can be a flat file, a server file, as we saw, or the saved one. And uh, we can also then join multiple tables within the data, or we can also blend when it's coming in from different data sources. Then we can also perform a blending. So let me first show you an option for join. Now you can see we have the order table here. When I drag and drop the people uh, sheet as well here, you can see that Tableau has automatically created a join. All right, it has automatically created a join when we have pulled in two tables coming in from the sheet. And by default, all right, we have the inner join that Tableau creates. So it creates an inner join here, wherein again, you can then click on the join option here and you can specify and modify the join based on whether you want it as an inner join, which is a default. You want a left join. Now, if you see the right join has been disabled here. Okay, I will show these options here. By default, the right join is uh, disabled by uh, Tableau by, defa by default. And to enable that, you will have to uh, connect to your uh, Excel sheet in a different manner. I will show that to you shortly. So that's how you can change and you can perform your joins. This is where you can uh, explore and show the join clause. And here again, then you can specify, like you can see a join that's being created amongst the data source, which is region and region people among these two data. All right, so it's also showing you the join and whether it is uh, equal to or not equal to. All right, so you can connect to multiple tables and uh, based on that, you can add in uh, tables, you can specify the different joins. And based on that, then when you click on sheet, uh, you will then be able to see that there is a join being performed. There are two tables now, the people's table also that has been added in. And it has now performed an inner join on our data and you can start using this particular option. So let's say I'm going to pull in the region on my columns and I'm going to have my sales onto my rows. It's now providing me uh, details of my sales at a regional basis. Now, let's say I also want to analyze the people belonging to these regions depending on the color. So it's going to change the colors based on the central, east, south, and west. All right, that's how these are uh, the people, the number of people belonging to each region that it has identified. So that's how it has taken up the region people. As you saw, there was a join that was created and it's given us that particular option. And based on that, you can see here, we just have uh, this particular data source here. And uh, that's how you can see. Now I've used it earlier as well. If you remember, we had pulled in one particular table. Hence the blue tick mark sign here enables and shows us that this is the primary data that's being used. Now this comes in picture when we're using a particular join. So let me right now just um, uh, use this particular uh, detail here and uh, we're not going to require this. 
All right, so let's just close this. We just need one right now because we're discussing on blending. I'm going to show you the blending part later. Right now we're discussing on joins. So uh, that's how you can join in your data sources and you can combine multiple fields using these joins. So when you have when you have multiple tables, you can simply connect to the data. Let me go back to the data source page. Uh, this is a startup page, the data source page and you can see the joins that's been performed. Now, let's say you want to create uh, a join where you want to force due to certain situations and scenario where you want to force a write out a join, all right, or write join, or for that matter, you want to write a custom SQL. Now, you're not able to write a SQL right here in the, in the drag area pane where you can drag and drop your sheets from the Excel file or any kind of a file that you're connected to. For that, uh, and to enable the right join, you will need to uh, connect to your data in a specific manner. So let me open up a new instance of Tableau here. And let me show that to you as to how we can enable the right join and how we can have our custom SQLs as well. So in case if we want to write in a custom SQL on our view, then how can we perform that initial custom SQL, all right? Okay, so let us connect to our data here. And I'm going to take you on to the Excel file. Now, when I click on the sample superstore here, Okay, uh, what we had done is we clicked on open and that's how we opened up the uh, file, all right? And that's how we could see the sheets. Now, instead of using the open option directly, what I'm going to do is in the drop down, all right, here, instead of open, we have an option that says open with a legacy connection, all right? This is what is going to enable us to write a custom SQL where we can specify a query rather than using the entire data source or pulling in the entire table. So quick clicking on the second option in the drop down in the open uh, tab here, you will be able to see the open with legacy connection. I'm going to uh, so ensure that you've selected that and that's how you will then connect to the data source. And with that, you now have a new custom SQL option that's opened up for you all. This is where you can, once you've connected, you can double click on the new custom SQL and you can write in your query. You can write in the SQL where you want to perform the query and pull in your data. All right, you can have your select from and let's say orders. All right, so that's how you can perform and you can write in a uh, custom SQL and you can pull in the required data. You can uh, have your required table that you can pull in in terms of uh, creating a SQL that you want to pull in uh, and have your data, all right? So you can have your select from the orders and preview the results. So here you can see the order table has 9,940. We have a preview of the data available in that particular uh, sheet that we pulled in. All right, and we can now parameters is what I'm going to cover when we come on to that particular topic. So I'm going to leave this for now. So that's how you can write your custom SQL and you can click on OK. And that's going to pull in your entire data. And as you can see now, instead in the earlier view, I'm going to just switch to the earlier instance of Tableau. You could see that you could see the name of the table that I dragged and pulled in. You could see the name order. But in case when we write a custom SQL, then it gives us the name which is written as custom SQL query. All right. And this is where you can get the information. You can edit the query in case you want to change the results and requirements. So that's how instead of clicking on open, you click on open legacy connection and you can have your own custom SQL defined. Now, along with this, all right, when you open and when you click on a legacy connection, when I drag in the people's table here, you can see that even the options for right joins have now been enabled. So by default, Tableau disables the option for right joins. And in case in certain situations and circumstances, you want the right join to be enabled, you will in the same manner have to import and uh, connect to your data using a legacy connection and you will have the right join, which is going to be enabled there for you all. So you can have your custom SQLs or the right join in that case, which gets enabled and you can use a custom SQL or a right join.
right? So that was custom SQL. Then uh, joining is where you can, as I mentioned, identify and choose between the clauses and the clause that you want to add in. Right now, let me show you an example of blending as well. So I'm again going to open a new instance of Tableau. All right, and uh, with that, I'm going to show you the example of blending. So let's say you have uh, you want to join in, and when is the best time? When is the best way that you should use now? Joining is when you have all your multiple tables that you want to join coming in from one data source. Blending would be required when you want to join in. Uh, multiple tables coming in from different data sources or for that matter you can also blend even though the tables are coming in from a single data source there might be instances that you might want to have still perform a blend instead of a join so let me show that option to you all right so let me connect to the data let's connect to excel pull in our sample superstore file that we have we have the order table all right, and I'm going to go on to the sheets here. All right, so we have one order, we have one data, which is the order table. Now I'm going to again click on add a new data source coming in from the same Excel file. And this time I'm going to have the people's table and move to the sheet. So now if you notice, we can see two uh, data sets here, which is one for the orders and one for people here. And uh, in here, now this is where the blending will, will take place. This is where you will have a blend automatically when you pull in a view, if there is a common view that comes into picture. Now let's say I'm going to first pull in the order date onto the columns, all right? And as soon as I pull in, you can see that my order table has now got a blue check mark, which has become a primary data source. All right, and now let me pull in sales onto my rows. And from people, let me have, uh, from the people's table, let's have region pulled in and added to the colors. So region has become a secondary data set and now you can see a blend sign, right? A linking or data blending that has automatically been performed on both these two data sets, all right, that we have the order table and the people's table, blue being primary and people, uh, which is being uh, secondary in this case, all right. So that's how you can uh, mention. Now, in terms of blending, what happens is you cannot specify the join here in this case. There is a primary and secondary data and it is automatically blending in the data for you. It is automatically pulling in uh, the data. You will not be able to your select on the kind of join. You will not be able to manipulate the join. So that's how even though at times you have the same tables that are coming in, as I mentioned, there are times where you might want to perform and change the join. So that's when you can use the joining table option that comes into picture. So that's the difference between your blending and between joining the tables, right? So uh, you can see this available link and you can see how it was simple to drag a particular view and uh, pull in data. And here as well, region has been added to the color pill because of which the legends have been created, identifying all four regions present in the data. And it's also letting us know here in the marks that region is coming in from the secondary table. You can see the orange amber tick mark here. And that's how you can identify that region is coming in from the secondary table that's being created. All right. In terms of uh, connecting as well, wherein you can combine and uh, have the join uh, enabled. Now, depending on the kind of data, all right, going back to the data source, depending on the kind of tables and the kind of data that we have, that's when we can enable and have the joins that we can uh, decide on, all right? So one is you would require and need to have <clears throat> Uh, a multiple uh, legacy connection with which you can then define the right out of join, all right? And that's how you can proceed and have additional uh, joins that you can work on. Uh, we also discussed how we could create and connect to a custom SQL query, all right? And uh, that is how we could, using the legacy connection, uh, also enable the right out of join, wherein we could then perform a right join on our tables as well. All right, and in case if it's a query, then it gives in the name of uh, the query uh, as a custom query. 
uh, which is what we saw onto the preview and the extract there. All right. Now, in terms of extract, all right. Now, extracts are basically your saved subsets of the data source, which will help you in improving the performance. So, instead of, as I mentioned, instead of being connected to a live connection, it is better that we select an extract which creates a subset and stores it in the uh, Tableau engine, wherein it performs the queries. And uh, it takes advantage of this functionality where it is not connected to the original data source. And with this, it can actually reduce the total amount of data in terms of defining and limiting it. So that's how you can create an extract. And let's say uh, once you've created an extract, you can then perform, like I said, you have the edit option where you can edit the additional detailings. You can allow an incremental fetch happening where then you can refresh the data each time or your data is updated, you can provide an incremental fetch. So this can help you in improving your performance. You can take advantage of the functionality in terms of the data source for um, uh, using the discounts or uh, the existing counts as well. And moreover, it's more like an offline mode. You're actually accessing your data as an offline access where uh, it's not directly connected and uh, you're able to use it like a data, uh, local data. All right, so that is the difference between a live and an extract. So that's how you can make use of the legacy connections as well. So let's go back to the presentation slides and have a recap. Now, uh, these are the joining tables. That's what we discussed that in terms of the tables that we have, we can join a table and we have various joins available where it makes it easy for us to uh, analyze the data that we want to review. We can join to a multiple tables and based on that, we can customize the inner, the left, the right or the full outer join. Now, the full outer join also depends on the kind of data source that you're connected to. All right. So in case of an Excel file, we still do not have the right outer join. Uh, option which is enabled. So this possible option again when you open with a legacy depending on the data type is how you will have the right out of join that you can post and have it enabled. So this would be depending on the kind of data source file also that you have and you have these four join types that you can use in terms of joining tables in Tableau. Now when would you want to use a join? All right. So uh, a scenario is that you have a sales manager of an online shopping website and he wants to analyze the customers who have returned at least half the number of orders that they have placed. Now to fulfill this requirement, he will require a worksheet wherein he can join the orders and the return table on a particular common dimension. All right. So that's how then he can create a join. He can change this between uh, the inner default to a left join between the order tables and the return tables. And based on that, he can then get to know the customers who have returned at least half the number of orders that were placed. All right. Now, in terms of enabling a right out of join, uh, this is taken care of by the Microsoft Jet Data Engine driver. So in case if you all are facing a trouble where you're not able to connect and see that particular option is throwing an error. This legacy connection options comes in only when you're using a Microsoft Jet, uh, Jet Data Engine driver. This is easily available in case if you do not have it, you can install this driver. And with this, it will enable the right outer join and the custom SQL for us. All right. To enable the uh, right outer join here, that's how you open it with a particular uh, legacy connection. Now, in terms of a right outer join, we saw an example. We can force and use a right outer join. We can select on a new custom SQL where we can type in and have our custom uh, SQL generated. And that's how we can work on with the uh, SQL where we can provide the SQL syntax. And based on that, the data source will then be generated. Now, in terms of blending, this is what happens when you have multiple data sources in your view or when you want to establish a link between them or you want to blend your data, uh, it does not create a role level join. So in case uh, like the example that we did, although it was coming in from the uh, same sheets uh, from the same Excel file, but we did not want to create a role level join, then that's when data blending would come in handy. You can use it with a related data across 
multiple sources that you want to analyze in one particular view. So that's how you can blend your data, which creates a primary and a secondary data. So we saw that in this example, uh, you can see that you know, there's a customer segment, department, and sum of sales, wherein the bars are being created, which are coming in from the time, uh, from the primary connection. But in terms of the sales plan, all right, these sales plan are coming in from a secondary data. You can see the amber connection here, the amber line here that is allowing you to understand and segregate and differentiate that it is a secondary connection. So in Tableau, uh, that's how you can identify as you saw that your primary source and you have your secondary source wherein you can identify and distinguish. You can distinguish between the common fields that are present in your data and uh, you can establish a connection. In case if it has not established a link, you saw that there was an automatic link, then you can provide a link uh, by explicitly defining a link as well. Let me take you back to uh, the environment. All right, so this was the custom SQL. <clears throat> now, in this case, in case if there is uh, no link provided, then you can provide a particular link onto your view. You can have the option if it has not enabled, then you can select your particular. You can see that uh, it has not uh, implicitly defined, but it's giving you an option that there is possibility of linking. So you can explicitly define, you can click on this link and use person as a linking field. And this has also linked in your data with the previous data that you have. All right. So that's how you can define and explicitly mention uh, the way that you can blend your data and you can identify. Another way can also be wherein you can edit uh, the connection in the mapping. And that's where you can perform. So you can go back to your data sources and you can explicitly define, you can identify uh, whether the first rows are the names, whether uh, the rows here are uh, automatically generating a field or not. All right. So that's how you can have these two tables and you can define the blending whether you want it or not. You can disable the linking as well in case you don't want to perform a particular link. So uh, with uh, coming to that, now let us understand, I've already discussed the difference between the joins and blends and where you can use it. So let's uh, have a recap again. Now in terms of joining, uh, joining is a SQL term where it is combining two data sources coming in from a single data source. While in terms of blending, it's more about combining two different data sources into one single sheet. All right. Uh, joining is done once at the data source, and this can be used for every worksheet, while blending will be done individually for every worksheet. Okay. And both the tables that are joined must, must exist in the SQL database. While in blending, it helps us combine the database, which is coming in from different sources, different locations. And in case if it's a multi-dimensional source, if it's a queue, then you cannot perform a join. And in terms of blending, you have a primary source. And uh, but in, in terms of a primary source, it cannot be a cube. But your secondary source can definitely be a cube that you can use in terms of performing a blend. All right. Uh, so that's how you can optimize your connections. You can select whether you want to have uh, perform a blend on your connections. You want to perform a join depending on the kind of connections that you have. And that's how you can work with them with the different data sources that you have available.